Hey everyone, welcome to the Optispan podcast. It feels like it's been a while since we sat down, Nick. Does, yeah. So I don't, I'm not sure why that is. A lot going on around here for sure. Um, but uh, we're going to sit down and talk about uh, a couple of stories I think that have have gotten some headlines recently for this edition of Longevity this week. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see what topics you've picked out, and uh, and hopefully we can add some context and maybe some clarity. Okay, yeah. So the first one comes from Science Alert, and I believe you sent me the preprint as well. The title is called "Common Diabetes Medication Slows Brain Aging in Monkeys." So that was from September, so pretty recent, right? And that's based off the study from Cell called Metformin Decelerates Aging Clock in Male Monkeys. So I'm going to be honest, this is a dense one, yeah. lots of data, pretty it's a complicated. Hard one. Yep. And this is one where I kind of read through it. I'm like, okay, I kind of I need to talk <laughs> to Matt about this. Yeah. So I mean, I think the study's pretty interesting for a couple of reasons. It's gotten a lot of attention, at least I guess I would say within the longevity enthusiast community. I haven't really, I haven't really picked up on a lot of popular media attention to this story. Maybe there has been, and I've just missed it, but essentially um, what they did was they, uh, this is a group out of China. were working in a non-human primate. So they treated uh, monkeys with metformin for about three years, which mm-hmm. is pretty long term for this kind of study. Um, and uh, I think the goal of their study was really to assess whether metformin can modulate the biology of aging in monkeys. Um, now, this paper is, is is actually really tough for a couple of reasons. It's very data dense. It actually is what they call a resource paper, and that's probably not going to mean anything to most people watching this, except in Cell, a resource paper is not primarily a research, new, uh, new sort of discovery paper. Mm-hmm. It's meant to be like a data resource usually, or sometimes a new type of software, something like that. So it's more like a tool for the field, a data repository for the field as opposed to new science. I thought that was interesting because in my view, this is a really interesting data paper. They did a lot of what we would call multi-omic sort of analyses on these monkeys over the time that they were getting either the control or the metformin. But the way it got presented and the title of the study implies a research discovery. Metformin decelerates the aging clock in Mm. male monkeys, which I personally think this is a very weak research study. So what they did was they treated mice with metformin or control. They measured a bunch of different types of biological data, built some, you know, aging clocks, which we've talked a lot about on the on the podcast. Are they actually measuring biological aging? I would argue no, not as a whole. They're measuring aspects of aging, things that change with age, and showed that the monkeys that got metformin, these changes that go along with age were decelerated or in some cases partially reversed. Okay. Um, then they focused a little bit more on the brain than other parts of the body. Um, when I first sat down and looked at this paper, the first thought I had, this was within 30 seconds of reading the abstract was what was the diet that the monkeys were eating? Because most of the time monkeys in captivity are metabolically unhealthy. They're fed a diet and they're sedentary. They're fed a diet that is not a metabolically healthy diet and they're sedentary. Because if they're metabolically unhealthy, then all of the effects of metformin are what we would expect because we know metformin is a really good diabetes drug, right? Mm -hmm. It's really good for people who are metabolically unhealthy. And unfortunately, there is very little evidence in the paper arguing one way or the other. And what really bothered me was the only data that's relevant to answer that question is hidden in the supplemental information. And doesn't actually answer the question, doesn't show whether or not insulin sensitivity was affected, even body weight. They hide it as BMI. They don't actually show you the body weight. They don't show you the blood glucose levels. They show you what they call, uh, I think, glucose sensitivity, whatever that is. It's a number. They don't even tell you you know, what they were doing, as far as I could tell. Or if it's there, it's really hard to find. This is yeah. This is the thing that frustrated me is, you know, there is no excuse, in my view, for a paper to be published in Cell because that's the first thing the reviewer should have asked. Mm-hmm. There's a no excuse that, that that disproving that alternative explanation isn't the very first thing they did, and it's crystal clear, and it's upfront. So that was my frustration level, as you could probably tell with this paper. I don't know what to make of it, because if the monkeys were metabolically unhealthy, the whole thing tells us nothing other than metformin has positive effects on metabolically unhealthy primates, which we already knew. Hmm. 
if the monkeys were metabolically healthy, then yeah, maybe this is further evidence that metformin can have a positive impact on the biology of aging. The other thing that was disappointing is they didn't actually show functional improvements. Obviously, lifespan, these monkeys live too long to do a lifespan study, but there wasn't any real evidence that, that you know, function was improved, which is what we all care about if we're really interested in health. So in my view, disappointing from the perspective of, I think the title is not strongly supported by the data. And I think the way it was presented was misleading. And it's really frustrating to me that a paper like this got into cell without going through what should have been a more rigorous review process. So this wasn't a lifespan study because after the 40 months or so, no. they stopped taking the metformin. They didn't follow until. That's until right. Yeah. Died. We have okay. no idea whether these monkeys were functioning better, living longer in mm -hmm. the long run. And again, I'm not I'm not criticizing them for not doing a lifespan study. That would be a much longer yeah. study. Um, but if but 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 I think the the implication from the title and the abstract was that this demonstrates that metformin, you know, positively affects aging in non-human primates. And and I don't think it does, given the possible and I would argue likely alternative explanation. This is really a metabolic, this is this is repairing what may be a metabolic deficit because of the way the animals were fed and housed as opposed to a true effect of metformin in a metabolically healthy population. Now, it is fair to say, and I've said this before on the podcast, I think metformin is a very useful drug for people with diabetes and potentially people with prediabetes. I believe, I can't prove, but I believe that diabetes, metabolic disease accelerates biological aging, and metformin is a useful way to offset that acceleration of biological aging. If that if that's what this study is showing in non-human primates, frankly, it's a waste of time. We already knew that in people. Why do we need to do this in captive monkeys? Would be my view. Hmm. So again, that's the sort of frustration level. Like this could be a really important study. We have no way of knowing. But what are your current thoughts on metformin as like a geroprotective or a longevity intervention? Outside yeah. of the study, but just as a Yeah. Whole. So before this study came out, and this is what I've said, I think, on the podcast before, I think metformin is a useful drug for people who have diabetes or prediabetes, if that's what your physician prescribes you, take it. It probably will offset some of the negative consequences of metabolic disease on the aging process. I personally don't find the evidence compelling if from a risk-reward perspective that metformin has a positive impact on biological aging in people who are metabolically healthy. Mm -hmm. And there are some side effects associated with metformin that are underappreciated that I personally think put the risk reward at uh, uh, unfavorable risk for people who are metabolically healthy. Now, if this study actually showed that metformin had a positive impact on biological aging in non-human primates, I would put that into the, the category of evidence that, that supports use of metformin potentially by people who are metabolically healthy. I don't think that would be enough to tip me, even if, even if this study was solid, mm -hmm. but Right now, it doesn't really change my opinion at all because I don't think you can rule out the obvious alternative explanation, which is what we already knew. Okay, so this paper doesn't change your current opinion on it at all, really. Because I can't interpret it, yeah. right? So I, I, I kind of have to put it in the bucket of, you know, it doesn't really mean anything at this point because of the inability to interpret it. So, so one thing I think about when we do this together is imagine if you were the lead sort of researcher on the study, what would you have done different? Would you, uh... Well, I, what I would have done, mm -hmm. and, and maybe they did this, like I would have measured all the metabolic parameters that you could think to measure, including the obvious ones, insulin levels, mm -hmm. glucose levels, A1C, right? Yeah. And I would have put it front and center, figure one, table one in the paper and showing people we ruled out the obvious explanation. Hmm. That's what I would have done. And yeah. the fact that they didn't do that makes me wonder. Either, either they didn't measure those things in which case, then I really have to wonder about their qualifications to do science and the rest of the paper altogether, or they did those things and they didn't get the result they wanted. I, I, oh. Or they did those things and they got the result they wanted and nobody ever asked them to put in the paper, which is a complete failure of the review process. Yeah. So, I mean, I just, I'm like, what happened here? I don't know. But this hap you see this, again, many of my colleagues, if they're watching, are probably sitting there like, yep, this happens all the time. You, I mean, I, I, think, I think, you know, it is not uncommon that people will read a paper and sell, sometimes Nature and Science and too, and be like, who reviewed this? Mm. How did this get in without the obvious, you know, 
changes that should have been made. Does that happen pretty often for people with old information on a study? Like if they have A1C, but they choose not to. Yes. I mean, it? again, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to imply that happened here because I don't know. Mm. Um, but yes, that is very common and uh, it is common among certain lineages of scientists. And what I mean by that is you can follow, <laughs> if you know, um, people who are trained in a certain lab that does things that way, oftentimes they will also do things that way. Yes. I, and I mean, this is a complete oversimplification, but in my academic experience, I have, uh, I have experienced labs that set out to disprove their model. And so they actually try very hard to show the data that doesn't fit the model. And then there are labs that set out to prove their model. And those are the labs that leave out the data that doesn't fit their model. Because, and and I mean, unfortunately, this is where the misaligned incentives come in. You're much more likely to get a paper published in Cell Science and Nature if you leave out the data that doesn't fit the simple model. And so this is why I am very uh, suspicious of labs that publish, you know, two, three papers in cell science and nature a year. Mm. Unless you're working in a field that is extremely um, uh, cutting edge or on technology that's extremely cutting edge, biology is too complicated and it is, it is exceedingly rare that things would work out in such a perfect way that you would get this body of work that would be the kind of work that is routinely um, published in those journals if you're not leaving out data that doesn't fit your mm. model. Okay, yeah. This is my personal opinion. No, that's interesting. <laughs> do you think too much time, energy, resources is being put into metformin in this field? Or do you think it's appropriate amount? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I don't, I don't know how much time, energy, and resources is being put into metformin, honestly, overall. I don't know that I have a good feel I for see. that. I think my impression is metformin kind of peaked about five years ago mm -hmm. in terms of enthusiasm among the scientific community. And uh, I think you know, there has been a, a pretty significant uh, waning of that enthusiasm because we now know pretty clearly in laboratory animals, this study, put this to the side because I don't know what it means prior to this study, that metformin doesn't seem to impact normative aging in, at least in mice, to any significant degree. And so that kind of, I think, you know, people became less enthusiastic and also the inability to replicate the human studies that suggested that that diabetics taking metformin had some mortality benefit compared to non-diabetics not taking metformin. In other words, people with diabetes who are taking metformin when compared to people who don't have diabetes, who are obviously not taking metformin, there was an initial paper that reported that, that diabetics taking metformin lived a little longer that has subsequently been uh, not replicable in a couple of other studies. And so I think the combination of, you know, increasing clarity that metformin in laboratory mice does not impact lifespan and probably not aging in general if they're metabolically healthy and the inability to replicate what was seemed very exciting in humans caused the field to become less excited about metformin. I do think metformin is an interesting drug and it does increase lifespan in C. elegans, for example. So I just wish we had good quality studies that answered the interesting questions as opposed to studies like this, which get a lot of attention, I think can mislead people, um, uh, but don't actually answer any questions because again, unless I missed something and I, I have to leave open the possibility, there was a lot to this study. It's possible I missed something that, that, you know, that they, that they showed that I think that, 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 that would weight against the alternative explanation I'm suggesting. But I would also say there is no excuse that somebody with my experience should have to spend 45 minutes and not be able to find that data if it's in the paper. Mm. <laughs> so if that's the case, again, it was a presentation issue. I don't think it's there. So having said all of that, again, I think unfortunately this study doesn't really change the equation, but it may kind of shift the pendulum back towards you know people becoming more interested in metformin. Mm. Any closing thoughts on this study or this this paper? No, I think I've said enough, yeah. probably. <laughs>